All right, in this video, we're going to go into the bridge and take the tour that's up there. Uh, see the number 41? There's, there they are going on a tour of the bridge. It's also called the island. And it, they do it in groups of um, 20, takes maybe 15 minutes, and it can back up. So it's best to do that early in the day. In a minute, we're going to actually go on that tour and uh, show you what it's like. Okay, we've just come aboard. On the left, you'll see the audio equipment. We might as well pick it up now. Yeah, we'll get the audio equipment now. It'll save us a trip having to come and get it later. It's uh, very well done, this uh, audio description of the various things on the ship. So we're on the hangar deck, and we're going to head down to the end, way down at the end there, and we'll find the doorway that goes up to the flight deck. All the guys that are wearing yellow caps and red caps are volunteers on this ship, and they're usually retired military, very professional. They'll answer any of your questions. So here we're up on the flight deck now, and we're going to head down and take the guided tour. The first area we will see will be the control tower where the air boss is located. We'll be able to see it real quick. There it is right there upstairs. See up there, the glass area there, that's the control tower. We're gonna be in there in a few moments. So we'll head around the corner here and uh, the gentleman in the yellow cap is Dick. He's retired Navy, 25 years in the Navy and he was 17 years as a Navy helicopter pilot. Very professional. These guys are amazing. He's guiding us down, so we will line up down here and go on the, the tour of the island. It's called the island. We met my guide up on top. Now, because of your height, because of your height, you're going to have to lean in as you climb ladder to landing, ladder to landing. On this huge ship, we put some of the smallest openings at the top of each ladder. If you lean in, you'll pass right through. If you forget, <coughs> Midway wants to kiss you on the back of the head. So if you'd start climbing. Island manager, uh, group seven, climbing now, sir. As the last person in the group, Don's up there in the yellow hat. If you tell Don you're the last person, he'll start the tour. Thank you. Okay, Steve. Okay. Good morning. My name is Steve. I'll be your do the docent for your tour of the island today. We're currently in primary flight control, or we call it PryFly. PryFly is Midway's tower. From here, they control all aircraft movements down in the hangar bay where you came on board, out here on the flight deck, up to 2,500 feet above us and five miles around us. Just like the tower at the airport over here, the difference is that tower is stationary. We go where we feel like going, and we've got that control zone for us. Before we talk about the people that work up here, let's talk about flight operations. We fly in what's known as cycles. A cycle is basically this. We'll launch 12, 15, maybe up to 20 aircraft off the bow, catapult them. They go, we'll shoot them once every, uh, about once every 45 seconds. One, one uh, catapult, one then catapult two, catapult one, catapult two. You'll go from zero to a hunt about 150 miles or 60 miles an hour in two and a half seconds and 250 feet and you pull about two and a half G's. You cannot get that ride at Disneyland. Okay, now 
They'll go out, they'll fly, depending on the type of aircraft, but the, the cycle usually lasts about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes. They'll come back and start circling above us, stacking up, okay? And when they're stacking up, the next we'll do is launch the next cycle. So we'll launch 12, 15, 20 aircraft off the bow. 45 seconds after that last aircraft goes off the bow, we'll start landing on the back end over here. And you'll go from 100, about 140, 150 miles an hour to a dead stop at 340 feet if you catch the number two wire. <clears throat> There's a guy up there that by the aircraft that says NK on its tail, he'll give you a brief on what it's like to take that catapult shot off the front end of the ship. And there's a guy back here with the uh, aircraft with the big NF in the middle of the flight deck there. Uh, he'll give you a, a, a brief on what it's like to, to catch a wire. And the guy back aft there, uh, just a side note, he was seal of the Blue Angels twice, so he's kind of qualified to give you a talk on what it's like to catch the wire. Okay, so who works up here? Well, we got the air boss, air department head, and the mini boss, his assistant. You're the assistant for a year, and then you become the boss for a year. They're both Navy commanders. They've been in the Navy about 15, 18 years. They're both either they're either pilots or naval flight officers, but they've had command of squadrons that land and catch the wire back there, catch the that's ergo they're called tailhook kind of guys. Okay, they run the show. Boss is kind of like God. The only guy that can override boss is the ship's commanding officer. They're assisted by three enlisted guys. One of them maintains this plexiglass board here. Now this board swings out so boss and mini boss can read it, okay, because it's going to be out here. And the guy that maintains it stands on the back so he doesn't block their view, which means he has to be able to write backwards. And he sends letters home to his mother and father. He writes those, those letters backwards. I'm sorry, I apologize, I didn't do something. Uh, so anyway, where was I? So the joke around here is it's easier to teach a 19-year-old seal to write backwards than to reach, teach these two old guys to read backwards. Over here, we've got a man that just stands here and watches these four orange dials. They're the arresting gear. He's, he's not setting them. He calls down to the arresting gear engine and says, this is the type of aircraft coming in, and he monitors to make sure they set the arresting gear so that it doesn't matter if it's a big plane or a little plane. It runs When it catches the wire, it runs out 340 feet and stops and they taxi it off. The third guy maintains this guy's, or actually operates this. This is the Fresnel lens landing system. It's an optical landing system that guides the aircraft in so he, when he comes in, his tail hook, this is amazing, his tail hook is 12 feet above the back of the ship and if he flies the glide slope properly he'll catch the number two of the three wires. Now that's a pretty amazing feat because the wires are 40 feet apart. 40 feet is like a tennis court. Think of the baseline on a tennis court, then the net, then the baseline. 40 feet to the net, 40 feet to the other baseline. So you're trying to land on a tennis court that's moving sideways because they come across the back of the ship. They don't land straight down the ship. And the back of the ship's doing this. It's an amazing feat. you got to be half crazy to do that. I was a ship driver. I'm not that crazy. Okay, so now what did I forget? Uh, you got him. We got that. We got that. Uh, uh, the, uh, the guys that stand in front of those plexiglass devices right there. They're the uh, tower flowers. They're up here. We call them their junior officers from the squadrons that are flying. They assist the boss and mini boss if there's an emer in flight emergency. We're going to head up to the chart room now so you can get a look at the chart room, what it's like to navigate a ship. Okay, so now we're in the, in the, the chart room. This is the home of the ship's navigator. He's also a Navy commander. Been in the Navy about 15, 18 years. The difference with, the, with, uh, with him is uh, that he <clears throat> doesn't have to be a tailhook kind of guy. He could be a helicopter pilot or the larger Navy fixed-wing aircraft that don't land on an aircraft carrier. 
He's assisted by about 20 to, depending on uh, when, when 20, 25 quartermasters. Quartermasters in the Navy are navigators. They're expert navi on navigation. <clears throat> so they, they're, one of their principal jobs is maintaining all the charts because the charts have got to be updated and accurate, and that's a, it's a Herculean effort because we have charts for virtually the entire world on board. <clears throat> and we use charts to navigate. So a chart, when you look at the charts, there's a chart there of uh, Subic Bay, the Republic of the Philippines. There's one of San Diego Harbor here, although that's not official. And there's one of Yakuska, Japan. Yakuska, Japan over here is where Midway was home ported from 1973 to just before decommissioning in 1992. Subic Bay is where we used to go for repairs and uh, or recreation and, uh, and resupply and upkeep. So <clears throat> if you look at the charts, you'll see numbers all over the place. The numbers indicate the depth of the water. But one of the things we always check before we look at the numbers is what are, what are those depths in? Are they in meters or feet or fathoms? Fathoms just six feet. Once we know that, then we'll look at the chart and we'll say, okay, where can we drive our ship? And if you look here, there's a black line that goes into the port over there. That's our, that becomes our road. There's no street lines on these, on these guys unless you're coming into a harbor. Uh, so we, we make our own road. We lay a track. And then we fix our position on the uh, chart. Follow me, please. It's 1.17 miles well, per hey, hour times 35. Times 35. It's about 40. It's about 40. 40. It's about 40. So every knot is 1.7. 1.17. 1. 1. Okay, so now we're up at the navigation bridge and pilot house. This is the home of the commanding officer and the navigation team. Uh, this is uh, now when you look at the uh, pilot house here. Inside the blue bulkhead is what was Midway was originally built with. That's where it was in there. And then over time, they built this navigation bridge out here. And it just over time, this is actually armored, and that's where the guys used to stand their watches inside there for protection. And they had like a catwalk out here. They walked around to, to come out with their binoculars to look at the sea before, back in the early days, right after World War II. So the commanding officer sits in that chair right there. Notice I said commanding officer. Some people call him captain, but... His title, official title, is commanding officer. He's been in the Navy 22, 24 years, somewhere around there. He's a Navy captain. He's a tail hook kind of guy. And he sits on the left because he can see his flight deck. Aircraft carriers are unique because the commanding officer sits on the left side of the bridge. On real ships like mine, I sat on the right side of the bridge over there. But on the right side of this bridge is the navigator's chair, or gator. We call him the gator. And he sits over there because at that table right there is where we do principal, he does his principal navigation of the ship. So that's what's happening up there. So the navigator, same guy from the chart room, just to, this is where you'll find him when we're underway, and that's where you'll find the commanding officer when we're underway. There'll be three junior officers standing watch up here, usually. The officer of the deck, the junior officer of the deck, and the junior officer of the watch, okay? Now, the officer of the deck has been designated in writing by the commanding officer. You gave him a letter that said, you are authorized to run my ship for me. Make it happen, do it safely, and if I'm not here, make it happen. So when the commanding officer's not there, some young lieutenant, maybe in his mid, mid to late 20s, is running 69,000 tons of diplomacy for your country. The junior officer of the deck is in training to become the officer of the deck. And the joke is, if the, uh, it goes well, the OOD takes credit for it, the officer of the deck. If it goes poorly, blame the junior officer of the deck, the JOOD. The junior officer of the watch is a fresh caught ensign. He's coming up here. Uh, he'll be maintaining the surface plot, the plot of the ships around us, so we don't have a collision. Okay, he does that uh, as, as, as a routine, and he'll eventually work his way up to officer of the deck. Now, back inside the armored bulkheads here is where you're going to find the guys that really do all the work. The helmsman. He's a listed guy. He's uh, maybe 19 years old. Six months ago, he's asking mom and dad for the keys to the minivan. Today, he's got the keys to a 69,000 ton trade console there. Over here, this brass panel device right there. You guys can go back in here. It's okay. Uh, that's the engine order telegraph. That's where the lead helmsman stands his watch. He's sending orders to the engine room on how fast to turn the propellers. 
okay, it goes down, and they'll spin the shafts forward or aft, faster, slower, whatever he sends down on that there. Back there where there's a microphone back there on the bulkhead, that's where you're going to find the boat's made of the watch. You've heard that whistle, I think, by now, that and then he passes the word. He's doing that. Uh, he's also security. Nobody comes through that door. It comes up here unless the commanding officer or the officer of the deck says it's okay. And he's also, more, most importantly, supervising the, supervising the helmsman and the lee helmsman. Next to him over there, there's a picture of three ships on the bulkhead. There's a little table. That's where you're going to find the quartermaster of the watch. Quartermaster of the watch logs everything that happens in the, in the ship's uh, deck log. Launched aircraft 151, recovered aircraft 232. Uh, Joe Schmutz fell in a hangar bay and skinned his knee. Um, flight quarters, uh, captain's on the bridge, captain's off the bridge. At the end of the watch, the officer of the deck goes back there and he reviews that log and signs it saying it's accurate. At the end of the month, the commanding officer gets to review it and sign the cover sheet and it goes off. Now, there's one more person and he is here today. And ladies... I take no offense, it's he on Midway because women never served on Midway. They were, they, Midway was decommissioned before women could serve on an aircraft carrier or any combatant. But if you go across the bay over there to the USS Ronald Reagan, the good ship Ronald Reagan, about 15 to 20% of her crew is female. And I like to point out that one of the guys that's the docent that's given the traps lecture back there, Gil, <clears throat> Gil's daughter will be the senior E-2 pilot, or she'll be the commodore of all E-2s, in the United States Navy. And I love the fact that my, my son-in-law is going to be working for it. It's going to be great. Anyway, the one the other person up here is the conning officer. The conning officer is, is a title that gets passed between the officers on the bridge here. The conning officer gives orders to the helmsman and the lee helmsman. It's a very formal process, the conning officer. You'll hear, this is Lieutenant uh, Fadaga, Lieutenant Schmatz has the con. And Lieutenant Schmatz will call out, this is Lieutenant Schmatz, I have the con. Next thing you'll hear is the helmsman say, Lieutenant Schmatz has the con eyes, steering course 270, checking 263. And then the Lee Helmsman calls out, uh, uh, Lee Helm I, all head standard turns for 15 knots. And then the boatswain mate of the launch will call out, and the quartermaster will call out. And it gets logged that Lieutenant Schmatz now has the con. It's important we all know who has the con because those two guys will only take orders from the con. When I was commanding officer, if I wanted to get get more, if, if I didn't have the con, they didn't listen to me. They wouldn't do what I told them to do until I said I had the con. So that's kind of an overview from up here. We're going to exit down that passageway right there. When we exit, you look to your left, you'll see the commanding officers at sea cabin. Commanding officer sits in that chair right there, but sometimes he needs a place to go, to have a private meeting, to go take a shower. Uh, he's got a head back there. A head means bathroom to use civilian types. Uh, he's got a bunk to take a, to have a, uh, a short nap. And some days you just went into your sea cabin to beat your head against the desk to feel better, and then you came back out to do your job some more. Okay? And also, as you go out to the left over there is the auxiliary uh, con. And the auxiliary con is where, when we're pulling in alongside the pier or we're driving alongside another ship, the commanding officer would sit out there because he got a better view of things. So that's kind of an overview of what happens on board an aircraft carrier. We're going to exit now, and you know, when you get down to the flight deck, if you turn left, you get to see the captain's import cabin. If you turn left, there's a sign, Admirals and Captain's Country. You get to see two of the three beds you can get into on both sides of the ship. Okay, follow me, please.